Hi, Robert Chakro here. I'm going to talk about the relationship between song, which is release of contractive strength, and ne jin, which is expansive strength, at least in my view. And what a lot of people say is you cannot have ne jin without first having song. And I can see some truth to that, but there's a paradox here. Sung is the complete release of muscular contraction. And if you don't have Nei Jin, then you can't be in a state of Sung. Because state of Sung, you can't move no strength and there are only two kinds of strength there's Nei Jin which you don't have yet and there's ordinary muscular strength which you already have and are habituated to using so as soon as you start to do a movement you're not in a state of song anymore so you can't ever have res resolve this paradox or can you it's a paradox because if you don't have one, you don't have the other. If you don't have the other, you don't have the one. So how do you get it? It's impossible, but it's not. The way you get it is to release as much as possible and then do the moves as relaxedly as possible. And then little by little, you start to develop um, expansive strength and the contractive strength will lower. But for that to happen, you have to know the difference between the two. That's not easy. That's where a teacher comes in. That's where a lot of experimentation comes in and a lot of practice comes in. But as you start to recognize the difference between muscular contraction to move parts of the body and expansive strength to do it, the fledgling expansive strength will start to replace the contractive strength. Then you can get into a deeper state of song. As you get into a deeper state of song, you become more sensitive to the difference and then it grows. And that's the way I think it has to go. The problem is it's very hard for anybody to explain expansive strength. I've tried in my most recent book. It is, you really need somebody to show it to you and feel their body when they do it and feel your body when you attempt to do it and coach you that way. So let me show you an example of how I regard both of these as I do the Taiji movements. Let's say I just did the beginning, the uh, preparation move, and I'm going into the beginning move and then ward off into ward off left. So I try to be in a state of song as much as possible. Let everything just sink, release everything, stack everything, one thing on top of the other. And now I start to lift my arms. No, do you see what I did? That was ordinary strength. I have to first feel the weight of my arms, really, really heavy. And now I have to find a way to lift them, starting from nothing and starting, oh wow, there it goes. I'm feeding the energy in from below and lifting. And I don't worry about how high I can lift it. As I lift it, it gets heavier and heavier because of the extension. And let's say, I can only lift it up to, I'll go a little faster. Let's say I can only lift it up to here. Okay, now I extend the fingers. I don't pull them up, I extend them from below and feel that I can do it as much as possible. And then lower the hands. That was my shoulder giving out and lower. Now I go into ward off left. Uh, is this what I do? No, that's ordinary movement. 
what I have to do is have that same feeling in my right arm as I lift it. It's lifting, but now I have turning and momentum and shifting, so it makes it easier. So it's coming up, but I have to still support it. My left arm's very heavy, and now it swings, and it's this. So this is the way you want to do every move. The have arms be as heavy, as heavy as can be. And if you're not doing that, it's going to take a long time to get Nei Jin. But if you do it and recognize the difference between pulling and pushing, pulling is, is, is contracting muscles, pushing is expansion, you will get it much, much more quickly and it gets stronger and stronger. Thank you.